My name is Mike Honan, and I would like to introduce you to the concept of the service profit chain. And more specifically, looking at the part of the service profit chain that deals with value and how we define value in the context of the service profit chain. Value is highly subjective. What I would like for £10 or £100 or £1,000 is probably something completely different from what you expect for £10 or £100 or £1,000. So already here we get into trouble because if value isn't definable as a sort of set thing but is subjective, that means that in every service transaction that we are thinking about or working with, we have to be very, very personal. We have to be, we have to have this concept of mass customization. We have to adapt each service transaction to the individual customer. If we don't do that, if we give everybody the same kind of service, it becomes one size fits all and we get to a three, a 3.5 in satisfaction. It's okay, but it's not fantastic. So understanding value means we need to see it from the customer's perspective. How does a customer look at that? Well, the first thing they look at is, are they going to achieve the result that they actually set out to get when they entered into the agreement with you to deliver a service? So if you're a butcher, this is relatively easy because you, if you're a butcher, your customer comes down to you to your shop and he says, I'd like a steak and then I'd like this kind of steak and this kind of specification and size and whatever it is. And you, they receive a steak and they go home and they have a steak and they can see very clearly that this is exactly what it was I wanted and the price is fair, etc. It's very tangible. When we're talking about services, they are intangible per definition. You don't get anything in your hand. It's an experience of some sort, it's an intangible thing. And so the result is also more difficult to get to grips with. And the first thing to understand here is that service is always asymmetric. So what the service provider is selling is not necessarily what the service customer is purchasing. So if we take the airline industry, when uh, you go and buy an airline ticket, then what the airline feels that they are selling you, what they think of is that they're going to sell you one seat on this flight number, such and such, and it's going to be this seat in this row, whatever that price. But you are not in the market for a seat on an airline. That's not what you're thinking that you want. That's what you're not, not the result that you're in the market to pay, buy. What you want is you want to be in Paris by this evening. That's why you're going to fly. And that's why you decided to buy an airline ticket. If we take the hotel industry, when you go into a hotel and you put your credit card on the reception desk, what is it that you're buying? What is the result that you are in the market to buy? Well, from the hotel's perspective, they're going to give you a 45 square meter room with a king size bed and air, and air conditioning and blah, 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 mini barn, whatever it is. That's the way they look at themselves. But that's not what you're in the market for. That's not what you're actually searching. You've been driving 300, 400 kilometers. You, want, you have a very important meeting the next day. What is it you want? You want a good night's sleep. You're in the market for a good night's sleep. And no matter how nice the hotel is and how many crystal chandeliers they have in the lobby and all the rest of it, if you don't sleep well because there's a noise out on the hallway or there's a band playing or whatever it is, then you're going to be seriously annoyed with this hotel because they did not provide what it was that you were really searching. And you were searching for a really good night's sleep to be refreshed the next day. Otherwise, you could have slept in your car. Much cheaper. Better value but you wouldn't have been relaxed. You wouldn't have felt energized by a good night's sleep. So you are in the market in some situations when you go to a hotel for a good night's sleep. Take another classic, a wedding. So when you contract with a hotel for your wedding, the hotel tends to translate this in. So this is going to be the menu with the organic greens and goat cheese and filet mignon with mushrooms and etc. etc. Is that what you're in the market for that day? No. What is it that you really want to buy? What is it that at the top of mind you are looking for? You're probably looking for the experience of your life. And it's going to be a very, very, very special day. If the person selling you the service understands that and starts trying to investigate, so what is the experience of your life to you? What does that mean? Because it might be something completely different to what it is to me. But what does that mean to you? 
then suddenly I can start proposing you that angels are going to come down in trapezes from the ceiling and the violins are going to be playing and this is going to happen and that is going to happen because that's what I've suddenly understood by talking to you is what you would think was a fabulous experience and a unique experience in your life. And the more I understand that as a service provider, the easier I can get you to take the pound notes out of your um, um, wallet. Isn't that right? Because the more you feel, hey, somebody here is actually understands what it is I'm looking for, what is really the result I would like. And so the value in your head increases. If you don't feel that they're giving you your value, you're going to go for the middle of the road solution, but you're not going to pay that extra buck. And that's why understanding what it is people are really in the market to buy is crucial to increasing the price. So that's the first important aspect of understanding value. What is the result they're looking for? The way we then deliver that result, we call process. So I can stay in any number of hotels when I come to London and I can get a good night's sleep in a lot of them. But the way they do it is very different. And what is different about them is the process. It is the way they do it. So when you buy a pair of gym shoes or a new t-shirt, you don't really think too much about the process. If you have a little bit of a conscience, you might think, oh, the poor little children in India who sit and doing this and they're only 14 years old and they breathe all these fumes and it's not really good and they don't get paid. But you probably don't. Most of us don't. So when we buy goods, we're not really concerned with the process that went, went into manufacturing. But that's not the case when we look at services. When we look at services, what we're buying is process. Process is what makes the service unique and fantastic and special. Process is what differentiates what we do compared to what all the others do. So our process is crucial in creating an exceptional value and an exceptional experience for the customer that we're looking to serve. The so process in this kind of thinking has five components. Time, trust, knowledge, empathy, and proof. How does time play in? How important is it to create that result for the customer that things delivered on time, that uh, we are timely in our response, that we come back to them fast, that we give them enough time to eat, that we don't rush them, that we're very speedy with our food. So time has a lot of elements and it's an, it's for most of us, it's quite crucial to get the time bit right compared to what it is that people are looking for. So when I was in the restaurant business, I used to try and teach my people to try and find out very simply from a couple that comes in and has dinner, what is their time frame? Are they in a hurry or do they have all the time in the world? Because if we know that, we can calibrate our service to that. If they're on their way to the cinema, then we can speed up and, and suggest stuff to them that doesn't take too long and we can serve quickly, etc., etc. And we can get, have them out of there in 45 minutes and they're going to be thankful and happy and they're going to may be able to see their movie. But if it's their wedding anniversary and they plan to spend the whole evening and celebrate and we give them the cinema service, on the hurry up 45 minutes they're going to be seriously annoyed with us because we've ruined their evening because we didn't understand what time how time played into the result that they were looking for we hadn't understood it so we just asked them when they come so have you been here before what are you doing this evening are you in a hurry do you have time etc etc and suddenly we get an understanding for what is this we under we can understand what the result is about it's not just most people don't go to a restaurant just to get because they're hungry they go to a restaurant because there's a different result that they're actually looking for. So trust, to what extent do we feel as a customer that we can trust the service provider? Do they do what they said they were going to do? Are they punctual? Are they reliable? All these things play into that. Are they knowledgeable? So do you feel that the person that you ask behind the counter, the rent -a car counter, the airline counter, the waiter that suggests that, special bottle of burgundy and you ask them a follow-up question and then you suddenly see this blank face and you go uh oh they don't have a clue what it is they're talking about and when you get that impression then you suddenly have a sense of diminished value it's not really worth it but if you have somebody who says oh i can explain that to you and this is how it works and that's how it's this and this and that and that in this way then you say oh oh it increases your perceived value of the experience empathy it's crucial to what extent do we as customers feel that the service provider understands what it is to be us. That they can put themselves in our shoes and 
live what we are living and adjust their service delivery to that. So empathy is crucial. Sympathy is not enough. We need empathy. And the final part is proof. Sometimes we deliver services that we don't actually get credit for. We do something for people. We help them with whatever it is, and they don't even realize that we've done it. So often we have to be sharper at making a point of showing the customer that we've actually delivered something to them. So if you go to a hotel, you'll notice that the toilet roll has a little sort of fold on the thing on it. It's not to prevent the paper rolling out or something like that. It's not that why it's there. The signal is very clear. Housekeeping wants to send a clear signal to you, proof of cleaning. They don't want you to look around in all the corners to wonder, I wonder, did they come into this room and clean it or didn't they clean it? Uh, hmm, I'm not quite sure. I think there's a hair over there that shouldn't be there. Whatever. No, no. If we fold the toilet paper, you walk into the toilet, you look, oh, they've been here, F fantastic, thank you, great. So that's proof of service delivery. And this can be taken to very many different levels, but it's really worth remembering that that's a good thing to build into our service delivery system. So those are the two things above the line in our fraction. Underneath that, we have effort. So to what extent do we require the customer to put in personal effort or can we reduce the effort that they need to put in so can we make it easier for them to do whatever it is they want to do and in that way increase the value for them sometimes we can also make the effort harder for them by making them participate in what well, that's what we call co-creation and if we can have them co-create they actually put in a larger effort but they feel that it has more value because they are participating so a classic example of this would be you and your team have decided to go to a hotel to do a team building exercise and you ask the hotel, could we please come out to the kitchen and cook our own meal in the evening because that would be a great thing to do together. The hotel is going to charge you maybe 15 or 20 percent more. You're going to work more, but you're going to feel that that had more value than just sitting down and being served. The increased effort contributed to the value. But the classic one is to reduce effort in order for you to feel that you get a better result. Or in a different context, if you take IKEA as a concept, the price is very low, but your effort is very high. You have to do a lot of work to get that sofa from IKEA actually to back into your own uh, into your own living room. So there's a relationship there where they can keep the price down because they turn up your effort. So effort is also a variable that we can play with in many different ways and use to increase or decrease the value perception of our customer, depending again on the result that they're looking for. And the last one is of course easy, it's about price. So how does price play into this? The more we provide value above the line, the more we can increase the price below the line. And same for, so, and, and the same with the relationship between effort and price. It's a relationship where one goes up, we can put the other one down very often. And in some instances we can put both up as I described. So this is what it's all about. So if we want to deliver a level of service that gets people talking about us and makes them into true fans and loyal for life, we need to understand this value process, this value equation. So thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy working with the Service Profit Chain. <music>